What's up guys, welcome to the channel, Andy the Django. In front of us is the Ryzen Tech Ophion, a mini ITX PC case that was kindly sent to me for review. So thanks Ryzen Tech. We're going to take a detailed look at this case and see what it's like to build into. But as always, before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so you never miss a video and all the parts featured in this review will be linked in the video description below. At first glance, this looks like a premium quality case. It's 174mm wide, 375 in length, and 245 in height. It weighs 3.14kg, which is slightly less heavier than the PlayStation 4 Pro. Just a little fun fact for you there. It's actually shorter in height and narrow in width than my current PC case, the Ryzen Tech Metis Plus. But it is longer in length, which is good I guess, because now you can fit a full-size graphics card. The entire case is made out of aluminium, which feels robust. The left and right side of the case features tempered glass, with each corner superbly rounded off. Surprisingly, the glass panels don't actually touch the frame of the case, giving it a unique, floating glass panel design. However, that will mean there will be a gap between the glass and the case, so noise and dust might be an issue. To tackle that problem, you get these optional foam strips with the case, which I'm not really keen on because personally, I think they would ruin the aesthetic of the case. And if I'm honest, I would have preferred the glass panels not to protrude as it would have looked cleaner if they sat flat against the case. Or is that just me? What do you guys think? The other annoying thing about the glass panel design is that you have to be careful when you remove the panel itself. Luckily, the glass is extremely robust and I love the fact that you can look right through the case and see into the other side. The brushed aluminium detailing on the front of the case looks amazing. There's also other cool details like the exposed silver aluminium edges that run all around the case with curved corners giving it somewhat of a sophisticated look. And the front I.O. is very minimal. It has ports for USB 3 and USB-C and the power button. Inside the case, there are two compartments. On this side, it has room for an ITX motherboard. Underneath that is the GP riser cable, which extends from the other side. And then underneath that, there's room to fit a 120mm case fan, a low profile one with a maximum height of 15mm. And there is a magnetic dust filter on the bottom if you intend to install a low profile fan as an intake. To the left, you can fit an ATX power supply, but if you want to install an SFX power supply, you'll need to buy a separate SFX mount, which I'll link in the video description below. Towards the top of the case, you can configure it to have two 120mm case fans, or replace one of the fans to the left, or either two 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs, or one 3.5 inch hard drive. And at the top, there's also a removable magnetic dust filter. On the other side of the case, this is where you'll fit the graphics card. It has room for a full-size GPU that's up to 330mm long. The I.O. connectors, they're also located on this side, meaning you'll have to pass them through to the other side to connect them to the motherboard. And finally, if you simply remove the front side of the case, you get access to mount a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD. It would have been nice if they designed a smaller power button and shifted it to the side where the ports are so they could have made room for two 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs. So, those were the ins and outs of this tiny PC case. Next is my favorite part of the video. Let's build into this case. I'll be using all the components from my current PC case, but I'll have to replace the CPU cooler with a low profile one, as the Ophion case can only fit a CPU cooler with a max height of 90 millimeters. So this is Deepcool's Gabriel CPU cooler. I chose this one specifically, because you can mount a 120mm radiator fan, which it does actually come with one, but I'll be using one of Thermotate's Ring Plus fans instead to keep the color scheme of the build somewhat consistent. As usual guys, I'll link all the parts I've used in this build in the video description below. Now, let's start building.
So there you go. That's the Rajentech Ophion, a small ITX case that's relatively easy to build into. I did come across a few speed bumps. Originally, I wanted to use four of Thermaltake's 120 Ring Plus fans, but I had to leave out the bottom intake, as it can only fit a case fan with a maximum height of 15mm, which I overlooked before building into the case. So I am wondering what the thermals are going to be like, especially with not having a bottom intake fan. The other speed bump was figuring out where to put a second 2.5 inch hard drive. I was going to take out one of the case fans so I can mount a hard drive above, but I figured since I don't have an intake fan, I would need all the fans possible to extract the heat from inside the case. And the last issue was deciding whether or not to use the optional foam strips that came supplied with the case, as it might stop dust from entering inside the case. But how will it affect the thermals is the question, as it will completely cover up the gaps between the case and the tempered glass panels. So what I'm going to do is make part two to this review and cover all the concerns that I just mentioned. And I might also try a different set of fans and CPU cooler from Rajentech, just to see if there's any difference in temps. But guys, if you have any ideas on what kind of fan configurations I should use, let me know. And what games or software would you like the thermals to be tested on? Let me know in the comments below. Overall, the Rajentech Ophion is an attractive ITX PC case that screams premium quality and has superb detail. It costs around £130 in the UK and around $200 in the US, so it's quite a big price difference between the two countries. But anyway guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you've turned on notifications for part 2 of this review. And as usual guys, like this video if you liked it, share it with a friend who might also like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and all the parts featured in this review will be links down below. I'm Andy Django, and I'll see you in the next video.